Hello good people from the YouTube, here's Marcelo Durham once again and today we're gonna have a really really fun video where I'm gonna talk about my visit to the That Pedal Show HQ headquarters that I've been this Friday, this past Friday and I managed to meet Mick and Dan for the first ever time in my life which was amazing, it was one of the great meetings since I moved to the UK uh, and, uh, and I want to share with you the experience but first of all just a little quick homework thing uh, I since COVID uh, kind of well, didn't went fully away but since we stopped the lockdown and everything I managed to start a new band it's called M Files um, and we got all the social media stuff you know Instagram Facebook uh, and we have our new album just out it's called Beam of Light okay I'm gonna put the cover here for you guys to see uh, and it's on Spotify and if you want to do a follow there listen to us it will be great it's also in all other platforms but Spotify is you know the one that you want to be uh, have the best numbers I guess if you don't uh, like this kind of sound it's kind of a grunge punk garage rock kind of thing uh, you don't have to go but if you do give a chance to rock and you know bands nowadays just go there give your support listen to the song see if you like if you like great if you don't I appreciate that you took the time to go listen well let's go back to the experience of the TPS uh, meeting Mick and Dan I was not invited to go there okay I took the initiative to go there by uh, applying for their experience day it's a pay uh, experience date okay so I'm not gonna say how much it is you, if you want you have to subscribe to to go for it it's not cheap but it's not crazy expensive also for me I'm a big fan of the channel I have been watching Mick uh, as a player about 10 years now uh, with random videos on YouTube and then they start the channel I saw their first video I thought it was really cool although there was very <laughs> a lot of noise in that video it's so cool to see the evolution but as much as I was watching Andy doing his demos of pedals at the time on YouTube, I started watching uh, Mick and Dan do their thing too since the early beginning. So it's more like, I think TPS is now officially seven years and I've been watching for a long time, you know, uh, going to bed and putting there and going to sleep while they're talking about pedals and stuff like that. So, I mean, they, I would say they're kind of important to my musical, technical, gear education kind of thing. Uh, it's always good to see their, their point of view and everything. And I thought it was a good way to give them back. Of course, they make money on YouTube and everything, but I thought, you know, what is, to get to meet the guys is gonna be such an honor. And also I can kind of pay back these seven plus years that they have been giving me entertainment. So I thought, you know what, whatever, I'm gonna pay for it, I'm gonna go there. I, I moved from Brazil to the UK to London and they don't live in London, they live far away. I had to take four hour and a half train with a lot of changes, was, I had to wake up five o'clock in the morning to be there at 10, but it was worth it because I did the hard thing, which was move from Brazil to London to the UK and, and then I thought, no, I'm already here. I came over here and I have the chance to meet these guys. So I might as well go. And it was everything that I expected it was great. One thing that I could say is that one day is just too short. You, I definitely left with a feeling that I needed to spend a whole weekend there with them to be able to settle down because my uh, level of excitement was so high. Um, but I came in, you know, there's other, uh, there's a small group, you know, it's like six people, Max and the both of them, and Catherine, which is a mixed wife, and, and Rosie, which is their dog. So we meet, these are the four people that we meet, and we're all there together, so 10 people in total, including the dog. Um, and, and it was great because we get this introduction, and then we all kind of know each other, you know, we present ourselves, like an AA meeting. No, I'm joking. Uh, but then they talk a little bit about their history and some of the stuff that I already knew to be honest because I'm a big fan but it was so weird to actually see them in person 
you know, like to touch and shake their hands and kind of say, oh my God, you're real. Like everything is on screen, everything is on YouTube is great. You get the information is really easy, but you don't get to know people and see them. I never managed to even see them playing live. They do a few gigs around London, I mean around London, around the UK and usually it's quite far as not at London. If it was in London, I would go. But I never managed to, you know, get to see making him play in front of me. So that was already quite amazing. You know, I like his style so much. After that, we do a little tour, get to know the place, do some lunch, more conversation, which is nice. And then we get to the actual experience after lunch, which is spend some time with with Dan. When, well, they divide the group in two people, and then some go with Nick, some go with Dan. But if I got with Dan first which was he checked my pedal board and I show him a lot of stuff that I brought some Brazilian handmade pedals modify uh, modifications that I did on my DS1 that he liked it a lot brought some Chinese counterfeit pedals for them to compare with their expensive crazy pedals and was quite an interesting I'm not gonna get too deep into that but it was quite an interesting uh, thing to check uh, and hear the pedals side by side. For example, uh, when uh, Josh from GHS said that the Boss VB2 was exactly the same as the Behringer one, I totally believe him and I bought the, the Behringer one for 20 pounds on Amazon. And it sounds amazing, it's great for life, it's perfect and everything, but then uh, Dan put the, his uh, Waza craft next to mine, we just switched really quick and it was obviously sounds a little bit different there's more definition on the boss one there's a high-end one and the the Behringer one is more mid scoopy and even has a little bit more volume but it's more because I think there's more uh, actually not scoop but more mids into it anyway detail but that kind of thing we would check with Dan was really cool more technical more specific more gear nerd and then you go to the second part which is the, kind of the most uh, scary one where you go with Mick inside the room where they record all the videos and you get to blast amps really loud. Actually too loud even for me. I've been on stage, I play for like, you know, thousands of people before and on stages and, but on a big stage you have to put the amp loud because otherwise you lose, the space is open and you, you can't put a lot of volume. But in that room, the loud, they put a 100 dB amp. We play, I played the, the two rock, it was two two rock, so I was making this silly joke that was, was the four rock but anyway whatever. Uh, but it was so overwhelming like I I couldn't like even control the guitar a little bit it was which was uh, it's also a learning experience you're trying to find your ground at the same time I was a little bit nervous because of the whole situation everything goes a bit too fast you're trying to and you're just getting all this information and so I for me I was stepping on eggs the whole time I couldn't quite chill but but still was so nice, was so cool. They're, they're so nice, I mean, of course they're there, they're entertaining you, you're paid to be there. And so they have this host kind of um, role that they have to play, but they're really nice people and you know, you know, you feel like it's genuine, it's legit. They're not, you know, faking who they are, you know, that's what they are. As, as you see on the program, they will be with you and, you know, I even got, the, this cool, I was gonna get a cap in the end of the day and then uh, Mick offered me a ride and then after switch to Dan, so Dan took me a ride to to the train station, like how cool is that, you know, the guys took the time to give me a, a lift to this train station which was, was really nice and I got also, which is really cool, a little kit, like a little that pedal show kit uh, where they give you like a bag this little bag like that, but upside down. That pedal show bag, and it comes with uh, a few things like a pencil, like an office pencil. I'm not sure if it's gonna get focused, but let's see. Oh, there you go. And you know, sticker, little pen, which is really nice. And the coolest thing, which is this handbook, like a notebook that I'm definitely gonna be writing my next lyrics on this. I, I was really happy with this little touch. I also bought a new shirt. I'm actually currently washing to, to use in gigs and stuff and videos here with you. I, you know, was all over there. I felt like buying a new shirt, you know, it was cool. And then trying mixed pedals. Um, they're 
Hum uh, harmonic tremolo on their signature pedal was really, really cool to, to try. I never tried one before. That was nice. I play, I showed my guitar, I showed this guitar that I made to, to Mick, you know, and got the Strat noiseless mojo tone pickups. And Dan loved this guitar too, he thought it was so cool. And uh, Mick also, also liked it, uh, he liked it. I mean, I show him this really thick neck and stuff. I, I think Dan was a bit more impressed with the build of the guitar and what I did and stuff, but, but Mick liked it too. I mean, more of a Strat guy, that offset thing. But still, I showed him also a Brazilian handmade pedal. It's called uh, Creamy. I'm glad you did. I'm not crazy. It was funny because at first for him I could feel there was just another overdrive when he was trying it. I mean when I was playing it, he thought, oh yeah, cool. It sounds he said it sounds a bit like a clone with a mix of a tube screaming. I said, yeah, that, that's one way to put it. It's a handmade pedal in Brazil by a guy that doesn't know how to do these pedals anymore. He forgot about it. He didn't take note of the project or whatever. It took me three years to find this pedal and uh, it's called Creamy. And, uh, and then I was playing it and he thought, okay, cool, this is one more Tube Screamer clone kind of thing. And then he played it and he was like, oh, wait, I, oh, I really like this, oh, it's really good. And, so, and I was like, yes, finally, you get what I mean? I'm not crazy. Because I wanted, I wanted him to like the pedal, to be honest. I was, I'd say that I think this is a great tone and I, I, I want to know if you think so as well, you know, or am I just crazy, you know? You want kind of some validation from your from the people that I admire and you like their tone so you think hmm, maybe they will like this as much as I do and luckily I wasn't crazy they liked it so that was a cool experience too uh, there was another kid who was I think the only person that was younger than me there who took a, a baritone strat custom shop like fancy stuff and and Mick got really crazy about it. he loved it uh, I'll put a video of him playing here And the guitar was quite amazing. I played it myself and it was so cool, like such a thick tone, like the, the bottom E string, the high E uh, was actually a B and it was a 15 gauge, like 0 0.015. So like, you know, I think Steve Ray, Vog Steve Ray Vogan was using like 13s, but the tuning is down. So it makes the whole experience so much like low end kind of thing. You can even play bass on top of the, <laughs> of the, the guitar. But yeah, man, it was so cool. It was so overwhelming. Like I went on my way back from the train, on the train coming back home, I just couldn't chill, you know, like, and I was awake for, I don't know. I was out of my house for 18 hours or something like straight, nonstop. When I arrived home, I was like completely destroyed after listening to loud music for like the whole day and stuff. But it was an amazing experience. I do recommend. It's of course, they're only human. They can only do this so many times there was so many people but it was it was great i would definitely recommend if you're in the uk if you can do that you know be on a waiting list or whatever i was insisting a lot sending emails all the time to be able to go and and it was uh it's also something i give to my birthday because my birthday now in october 11th so it was really cool to give myself that that birthday gift to you know spend some money but go there and meet the guys it's, it's great I'm trying to remember if there's anything that I, that I forgot to mention about this uh, experience, but 
And also, I, I mentioned to them that I have music on Spotify. You know, my stuff, my Brazilian solo stuff, which is kind of import, is in Portuguese, kind of the soft rock with bossa nova and Brazilian rhythms. If you're a very hip, hipster person, you might like it. Uh, but also, what I'm putting out now, which is the rock stuff, you know, kind of garage rock, with a lot of guitars, and um, which is called the M Files with the Beam of Light, the album here. So yeah, I wanted them to listen to that. So I, you know, gave all the links and stuff for them to check it out. Hopefully, they will like. I'm not expecting them to give me an answer or anything like that. I just wanted to, you know, throw the seed and see where it goes. As I am doing here in these videos, you know, whoever wants to, you know, have a listen, links are down below, you know. And I guess that's it. I've been talking a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut now. I'm gonna stop here. And uh, hope you have a. a a great week and uh, see you next time. So, cheers, bye, peace.